All right, uh, Jeremy in Colorado, got your President George here. Um, I'm going to try to spin it around if I can. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I figured I'd do a video. This one's going to be yours right here. So, I'm not going to make this one super long. But uh, we're going to cover a couple things here. So we're going to um, talk about FM deviation on these. So I've already adjusted the power. Low is 1 watt, high is going to be 4 watts. Um, and you should be fine with either one of those things that you mentioned in your comment on your order. Um, no problem at all using this on FM with 4 all the way, all the time, if you want to, obviously. The, the littler one of the two that you said can take up to 10. The bigger one, I mean, you can, I think, like 25 or more. 25 or 30 so yeah I mean you might see a little less output but no big deal I mean it's going to be more than four so um, let's uh, look at the deviation though because that's what I wanted to do here so uh, I'm going to pause this so we don't all have to wait for me to get everything ready all right so we're back with the George here we're running the deviation test so it's about 1.9 which is about right uh, they, don't, they want to be cautious we well, can probably give you some more. I don't know how much. Um, it's going to be over two anyways. But uh, two is the limit. I mean, technically. So by going over that, we're exceeding a little bit. But um, yeah, about 2.15 is the maximum. So a little bit of an increase but not too much there so something's better than nothing that's why I don't charge for this because there's very limited things you can do here um, with this radio so I'm going to pause it now I'll come back and show you the AM and stuff and then uh, we're going to do a couple more tests and then I'll show you the power output right now I'm measuring AM modulation here so it says, if we look here, it's right here where this says depth, 86%. This is the low power modulation, so we can uh, probably bump that up some. I don't really trust this device for measuring modulation. I prefer the oscilloscope, so we'll look at that. Um, it's okay, but you know, you're looking at AM, you should always have an oscilloscope. So that's where we are. Uh, let's make sure everything's lined up good. Yep. So, you really can't take this too much. It, very limited adjustment. So, I think we started, it was about like this. So, it does increase some, as you can see. But not a huge change there. So, and it's very restricted. Nice clean modulation though you'll get from this. So I'll look at the high power one, which will be our 4 watt dead key. Um, let's just see what it's showing up there. It's showing about 80 something again. So yeah, let's do this. take it too far on these though they tend to overreact a little bit so that looks good there I'm going to go back into standard mode I just want to check a couple things because sometimes if you over adjust these I find that they tend to flatten off when you're out of the service mode so I just want to make sure when I adjust the RF power this is high power right here now I'm lowering the RF power down See what I mean there? Yeah, that's the low modulation, and I over adjusted that, so it's a good indication there that I went a little too far. I see how it flattens right out, so yeah, we got to be careful. Then when you go all the way down, it comes back, so it's, it's usually between like RF power 2, 3, 4, and 5 gets really bad so two three four and five so I gotta fix that for you um, just 
just wanted to show that. So it's not one of these things where you just go in and you turn it down all the way and think, oh yeah, you're good, because it, it just doesn't doesn't usually work out like that. Like you would you would think, you know, you wouldn't want to turn it down all the way anyways, but you know some would think that, you know, oh I'm gonna get the most out of it by doing that, but actually it works against you, so I want to fix that a little bit here. And uh, we'll go try that right there. That should have fixed this up, I hope. And if it didn't, I'll just redo the test. Yes, yeah, so this is level six, five, four, three, two, and one. Yeah, we're looking we're looking good now. So that's the difference there. By not cranking it all the way down, you get a nice rounded positive and negative. So it's really important to do it right so that you're not wasting the power. Now I'm just turning it up. And it's looking good all the way through. All right, that's good. I'll come back and do sideband now. I'll show you the test on sideband. These are phenomenal on sideband on, on that one test, the TOI test that I do. These always are excellent. So I'll show you that in a minute. All right, here's our sideband right here. So we're looking really good. Nice and round. So now we're going to come up here. I'm not running the test right now, but I'm going to get the test started. So I'll get it started and I'll come back and show you. All right, so we're going to run the test now on sideband. We're super close here and here. So we're going to come up here and run the test. Well, it's not total power. That's a different test. This test right here. So we're looking at about 26, which is really good. And that factors out to about 32. So that's what the AWR says, you know, add six to that number. So that's excellent. Um, I think it's as good as uh, the radio I tested yesterday. What was that, that Nix Quad 5 Plus? So I would say that the Quad 5 Plus is, is good on sideband is is clean on sideband is a FCC certified CB which that says a lot about that radio and also like the DX5000 plus and the 6900V and all the other ones you know they're all like that so that's really good because obviously at that power level um, I think the DX5000 plus was doing in the in Nick's radio was doing like almost 20 something and this is doing 12 so this is doing about, uh, what are we doing peak right now? Go over here and see it in real time. Let's put the peak hold on. Uh, about 11 point something there. So almost, yeah, 12. So that's, that's awesome. So that tells you how good those are. If that spec can meet what this is, it's really good. And we can see here, oh, well, we could until the timeout timer. You hear how nice that looks too. Now that's some odd, um, not really too odd, but the, you have to balance the two pips. And when you do that, um, you know it looks really good when you do that. But uh, generally, when we look at two tone, I don't usually balance them. I just go with uh, how it is. But that looks really nice there too. So um, I think we're done with that. Just wanted to point that out. Um, how clean of transmitting this is and also that 10 meter radio is really good so keep that in mind all right so now we'll just come up here to our power meter and we'll finish off Jeremy's radio there's my cool president hat that B blood sent me a while back that was awesome so don't use the Bird 43 for much, it's just a sampler. I have this, um, right here, this coaxial dynamic, that's the part number. 
it's good from uh, two to a gig so that's what it's in there right now in the line section I don't use it really for power measurements I mean I can but I don't really need to well, it's still useful to me but just for its line section alright so we're gonna run some power checks here I got the KPO NM532 on here and the gain is up to about the V on the volume so this is sideband power right here one two three one two three check check one two so it does give you you know um, a little more than you'd expect out of a, a traditional CB radio which I don't think anyone's really going to complain about so with your bigger one there Jeremy you can run this uh, all the way in it's not going to hurt it so um, on the little one uh, run it let's see on the little one I'm just doing some testing here right now on the little one one two three one two three one two three check check I'm trying to figure out the right one two three one two three one two three check check one two that's probably safe for it there I'm sure um, so on the little one now this is assuming that you got a good SWR and everything is good with your system uh, run the RF power on the little one on sideband at zero three number three and then on the bigger one you can just run it all the way up like this and that's the kind of power you're going to put into it which they do say in the book on that bigger one that uh, 25 watts is a perfect amount for it so you're not saturating it or anything and it gives you a nice clean output so that'll be good for that um, AM pretty close to 4 there with it all the way up on AM it's going to give you you know a good amount of swing there and you can honestly you could run this like that all the way if you wanted to all the way into that bigger one um, it's not going to hurt it you know if you want to the 4 watts isn't going to do much let's see if I can't lower that and see what, what it does though here's level 5 I'm just trying to give you an idea so at RF power 5 uh, RF power 5 1 2 3 1 2 3 that's going to be good for the little one right there that's going to be perfect at all well I'm sure there's guys putting in a lot more than 10 anyways into them but uh, just out of safety I think no more than level 5 on the little one one two three one two three check check yeah this will be fine for that I think you know even though it's peaking a little over 12 I think it'll still be all right or a little over 10 I meant to say so uh, RF power at level 5 on the little one um, probably if you want to be really safe probably level 4 yeah it's a little bit lower on the dead key so here's level 4 one two three four five check check one two probably level 4 or 5 that's up to you whatever you want to do you'll probably see close to the you know the hundred or whatever that they do so level four or level five is fine on AM on the little one and then on the big one I mean of course let's see if we can't if you don't want to put the full four in let's see level seven is three watt dead key and what is it gonna do on peak one two three one two three check 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 one two well that's kind of up to you. You don't have to always run into the full potential, you know, but uh, it would be happy with you, whatever, however you run it. But with this radio, you're probably best suited just to run it all the way up if you want more power out of it. That's up to you. But, you know, the 4-watt dead key swinging up somewhere up in the 20s would be fine. So hopefully that helps you out. A little bit of knowledge there without me having to hook the stuff up and, and show you guys. I've already done that. Um, just gonna show you the transmit frequency. I don't know if I did that. Here it is. This is AM. It's awesome. Okay. Um, show you sideband. Same. So this is upper. So we're gonna be looking for around 206 with the one kilohertz tone. These are awesome radios. I mean, yeah, they cost a little bit more, but 
you're not going to, there we go, you're not going to find a better CB radio on the market than this radio, I think, you know, for the American market, a radio that's built for our market, because obviously the European CBs, there's more to be desired, I guess, with those, um, but it's not built for our market, so we can't actually, you know, physically buy it here, I can't sell the George II here, but I can sell this radio, and I can tell you that it's a awesome radio, so... You'll never have to use your clarifier unless somebody's off frequency. Does this radio give you the option to go R and T? That's one thing I'm not sure of. Let's find out. I'm going to switch some of your menu settings here anyways. So, But you'll never have to. I don't think it does. No, because a, a CB won't let you do that. So I'm going to shut that off. You can turn it back on if you want. I'm going to switch this over to SWR. Yeah, there's no there's no uh, unlock clarifier option on this. So, you know, the clarifier is only for receive. And if you need to use it, you can just tune somebody in if they're off frequency. But everybody seems to be on frequency that I hear these days, although I haven't been on the radio in almost, God, I think it's going on like at least 10 days now. I've been just busy. I've been building some antennas and stuff like that so I'm actually heading out after I get done with yours here and finish up my antenna that I'm building so uh, EL for the factory mic although I did run the NM532 on there it didn't hurt it but it's better if you're gonna run something else I don't know if you, you may have got one of those from me in the past but if you did put it in DY it'll be better if, if you have like one of these or um, if you have any other kind of aftermarket mic besides like this mic, the Digi mic, um, I'm not sure. I want to say EL, but I think I've also used it in dynamic and I don't really notice much of a difference. So that's going to be a question that you should call president at their, uh, Florida number and talk to their customer service and definitively find out. What does the digi mic need to be ran in? Is it electret or is it dynamic? And they'd be able to tell you. Um, I also got some of those um, Bluetooth mics. I just haven't had time to actually try to use one for myself. But the one that plugs right in. And then you have the little microphone piece. And you can click it and talk. And I believe you could probably even hook that onto your shirt or something if you wanted to. I mean it has channel up and down. I think it's a cool cool thing but uh, you know that'll be uh, something maybe I'll do later or something but as far as that goes we're all done um, I'm going to check the receiver off camera just to make this a little shorter because I got to get out there a couple hours before my son gets home hopefully I can get that antenna built and then maybe I'll show you guys that on a later date too and I got my one buddy coming over uh, World Radio 7516. He's bringing me another antenna that he was able to kindly pick up for me out closer to where he lives. And that is a 2 meter antenna. Uh, Cushcraft 13B2. I got a really good deal on it. And that will be for my repeater and FM simplex. Um, the other antenna I'll show you guys maybe on the channel some other time. It's for 2 meter sideband. It's a M squared. It's a 9 element. Um, I got it on a temporary test pole, and it's testing really good. Although, so I don't think it's high enough, and we haven't had band conditions here enough to try to really do much uh, with this radio on 2-meter sideband. So, uh, right now, it's just kind of stationary. So, I'm planning on maybe doing a big antenna swap over later. Uh, I'm looking at this GMRS antenna. I want to put a, a directional antenna up there for that as well. Um, that way I have all my bases covered. I'm not concerned with 70 centimeter UHF. I don't really care about that. I'd rather do GMRS. It seems to be kind of up and coming in my area. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So thanks, Jeremy. I'm going to try to get this boxed up for you. And probably will either ship out today or tomorrow. So 7-3 everybody. President George FCC here kind of wish if it was up to me I wish they'd get away from doing this FCC on the front of CBs and stuff and just call it a President George or call it President George USA or something but that's just me all right catch you guys on the next one